In this video, we provide the solution to question number 14 for the practice version of exam four for math 1050. In which case, we're given a rational function right here. 11x squared minus 8x minus 7 is the numerator, and the denominator is factored as 2x squared minus 1 times x minus 3. And so given this rational function, we want to compute the partial fraction decomposition, for which it's very fortunate for us that the denominator is factored. It saves us a little bit of effort. So note here that when we're trying to compute the partial fraction decomposition, the first thing we want to do is find the template. And the template is based entirely upon the denominator. I guess I should say the first thing to worry about is, is this even a proper fraction? The numerator has degree 2, x squared. The denominator has degree 3. So this is a proper fraction. No divisions necessary here. So then we proceed forward to find the template for the PFD, partial fraction decomposition. In which case, looking at the denominator, uh, we're going to have something like the following. Well, the, the 2x squared minus 1, it's a quadratic. So the denominator could be 2x squared minus 1. And the, the numerator would be then some ax plus b. Um, given that you could factor 2x squared minus 1 using a difference of squares, um, it would be irrational. But you could do that if you wanted to have linear factors. I'm going to leave it as this irreducible quadratic instead. Um, and then the last one, linear factors are our favorite x minus 3, then its numerator would then be some constant c. So we have to then find these numbers. So the next thing to do is to clear the denominators. You're going to times both sides of the equation by the denominator, 2x squared minus 1, x minus 3. You do that over there times by the LCD on the left, so they cancel out perfectly. Here, of course, you need to distribute. Some things will cancel, some things won't. We'll be left with 11x squared minus 8x minus 7. This is going to equal ax plus b times x minus 3. The thing that didn't cancel out was the thing you didn't have in the denominator. So the x minus 3 is st still around. And then you're going to get c times 2x squared minus 1, like so. So we can continue to multiply things out, and we can try to solve a system of linear equations. Um, I'm going to prefer to actually just use some cool values. That is, I'm going to annihilate some things. For, like, for example, I want to get rid of uh, this x minus 3. So I'm going to plug in 3. So we need to plug in x equals 3 onto the left-hand side. And you can do that. 3 squared is 9 times that 11, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just actually going to use synthetic division because it gives you the evaluation. And the arithmetic is generally uh, much simpler since, it's, since it doesn't actually require the calculation of exponents of any kind. So bring down the 11. 11 times 3 is going to be 33 minus 8 is 25 times 3 is 75 minus 7 is 68 like so so we see that the left hand side is going to turn out to be 68 um, on the right hand side when you plug in x equals 3 here you get 0 the whole thing is annihilated so we just have to plug in 3 here um, this one's not as complicated so I'm just going to plug and chug in the usual manner so we get c times 2 times 3 squared minus 1 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18 minus 1 is 17. So you get 17 times C. We want to divide both sides by 17, like we did right here. Um, and then 17 goes into 68 exactly four times. So that was fortuitous. Uh, we get C is equal to 4. Great. Uh, the next thing we want to do is, because uh, because we have this thing factored right now, I can't really plug in something that's going to just make it disappear unless I want to stick in an irrational number, which I, I probably don't want to do. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is play off of the fact I have a 0, right? I could plug in x equals 0 for the a, um, and that would then kill off the... I could plug in 0 for x right here, kill off the a. Since I know c, right, um, I mean I can come back here retroactively fixing this thing right here. We have a plus 4 like so. In fact, if I wanted to, I could even move all this stuff over here, combine some like terms. That sounds kind of fun. Um, you're going to take 11x squared minus 8x squared. That's going to be a 3x squared. Uh, and then we have a negative 8x. That didn't change. You're going to have a negative 7. Uh, we have a minus 4. So we add to this side, we're going to plus 4. We're going to have a minus 3 right now. And so this is equal to um, ax plus b. Uh, times x minus 3, like so. So again, I could plug in the x equals 0 and go from here. Um, it does turn out, though, on the left-hand side, though, if you wanted to, you actually could divide by x minus 3. So I'm just showing things a little bit different than how we usually do it. You actually could divide both sides by x minus 3, right? Just providing an alternative method here. So again, pulling out synthetic division, 3, negative 8, negative 3, if we divide by 3 here, what happens? Bring down the 3. 3 times 3 is 9. 
uh, minus 8 is 1 times 3 is 3. That gave you a 0, just like I said it would be. In which case, then the left-hand side actually simplifies to be 3x plus 1 equals ax plus b. So without any plugging whatsoever, we see that a is going to equal 3 and b has to equal 1. So again, alternative way of approaching this one. So then coming back uh, to the final form, I'll just come back up over here since I kind of ran out of space. Uh, our final answer is then going to be the following. a, remember, turned out to be 3, so we get 3x. b was a 1 over 2x squared minus 1. And then for the second part, C turned out to be a 4. That's still on the screen, of course. We get 4 over X minus 3. And this then gives us the partial fraction decomposition of this rational function.